Thank you for staying tuned. Education cannot wait. A global fund for education in emergencies of the United Nations has raised concern over the increasing number of out-of-school children in Africa. And this was during a discussion where the executive director of the group called on international community support efforts that will take the children back to school. New Central's Umaru Kirawa has details. There are millions of children across the African continent who are not attending school or receiving any form of formal education. In Nigeria, the situation is even more dear with approximately 20 million out-of-school children. This is largely due to various reasons such as conflict, poverty and lack of access to quality education. Nine out of ten school-age children in sub-Saharan Africa cannot read a simple text. How is this possible in the 21st century? Why did this happen? It can be changed, but we got to have a greater equity and sharing of resources to allow the African continent to really make sense of 224 as the year of education for Africa. While many states across northern Nigeria are trying to rebuild schools, employ teachers and domesticate the Child Rights Act, which guarantees every child the opportunity to learn and thrive, most often it lacks practical footings. In million teachers are required in order to provide primary and secondary education to children to reach all sustainable human development goals by 2030, education being the fourth sustainable development goal for, and also a foundational goal to achieve all other sustainable human development goals. Without urgent intervention, the future of millions of children and the country as a whole is said to be at risk. So far we invested 20 million point one and we are entering a second phase and we are appealing to the world to help contribute. The message here is that it is better late than never and no effort is too little as the responsibility of ensuring that the country's future leaders are educated cannot be left in the hands of government alone. It is also agreed that the time to make the efforts is now, as the future of the younger generation is at stake. In my degree for New Central, Omoru Kirawa. And to unpack this, I'm joined live on the news by Professor of Law and Expert on Child Protection Law, Dr. Omaru Alkali. Good morning. Glad to have you join me. Good morning. I'm pleased to be with you. All right, let me kick off by asking you, how can the child protection law be effectively implemented in different states to ensure the rights to education uh, for all Nigerian children? Uh, the right to education is uh, one of the rights in the Child Rights Act and in all the child protection laws in the diff different states uh, in Nigeria. However, uh, one challenge is the fact that uh, the provisions of the Constitution made the right to education a non-justiciable right, meaning that uh, you cannot institute an action against the state or the federal government in a court of law to enforce the right to education. So this uh, needs to be clearly addressed, and uh, the right to education should be a justiciable right uh, as uh, clearly uh, upheld by the uh, African Court of uh, Justice in the case of Serap and the federal government of Nigeria, that the right to education, as far as the Nigerian child is concerned, should be justiciable despite the clear provisions in the constitution that the right to education is uh, a non-justiciable right. So one way of addressing this is to uh, make the right to education a justiciable right, that is one. And uh, in addition to that, uh, the provisions of the Child Rights Act and the uh, 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 other uh, laws on child protection have equally provided for sanction where parents uh, refuse to deliberately enroll their children to school. So this is one area that has not been enforced. So uh, it's good that uh, uh, the government should enforce that where people deliberately refuse to enroll their children to school, uh, sanctions should be applied 
so that that can serve as deterrence to others. And uh, the children in the various states will enjoy this very important right, which is, of course, uh, the right to education, and that serves as a pillar for their development. Uh, one other way of also uh, achieving that is uh, creating public awareness. Let the people appreciate the fact that education is the key to success. If you want your child to grow and shine, you need to ensure that uh, you educate the child. More so that uh, the laws are there that provided for free education, the laws are there that made it mandatory. So uh, people should, uh, uh, especially those in the grassroots, should be made to appreciate the importance of education, uh, especially uh, at, uh, at, uh, at younger age, maybe let's say between primary education and of course, uh, junior secondary education as provided by the child protection uh, law of Borno State and uh, the various child protection laws of different states and the Child Rights Act 2003. Uh, Dr. Alkali, it's interesting you talked about the rights to education, but I'm wondering when it comes to the rights to education of a child, uh, particularly for those in the northern areas, what are the challenges we are grappling with? Yes, uh, uh, yes, we have challenges, of course, and one way of addressing that is teamwork. Uh, all stakeholders must agree to work as a team. Because uh, if we will work uh, separately without much coordination, there will be challenges. So one way of addressing that is to work as a team. Uh, the education sector, the government, the NGOs, all of them should put hands together, communicate, and will be able to achieve what they want to achieve if they work as a team. In addition to that, the issue of free education uh, should not be taken lightly. We know that... Uh, uh, the laws are there which provided for free education. However, when you go to school, you have issues like a PTA, where uh, children are, or parents are made to pay a certain amount, which is uh, also good for the school, parent-teachers association fees and the like. But when considering the, 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 the financial uh, situation, especially of the country today, it's not every parent that can afford to pay the PTA. Uniform is it's equally a challenge. The law has not said that government must provide all these things, but as a way of encouraging uh, parents to enroll their children to school, uh, a way of addressing some of the challenges uh, that uh, can serve as a bar between achieving the right to education and the child, the government should also uh, encourage parents by providing for uniform, may, maybe even uh, making alternatives for the PTA instead of parents to pay the government can decide to take care of that uh, as well, which is also a good way of addressing some of the challenges uh, we have. Thank you. All right, let's talk a bit about collaboration here. Uh, when it comes to collaboration or synergy, uh, how do you think communities and even local organizations can work together to ensure that children have access to quality education? Yes, uh, synergy is important. And uh, united, we stand divided, we fall. Uh, we have stakeholders, we have gatekeepers. Our traditional institution, our religious leaders are gatekeepers. They are closer to the people and, the, and people respect them. So if we really want to achieve that uh, synergy, we must be able to come and meet these people at the grassroots, talk to them, make them appreciate the importance of education, make them important and give them a role to play in doing that. Uh, we know that uh, before now, uh, the traditional institution uh, was well engaged in the enrollment of children into schools. Our parents uh, went to school, most of them went to school through the traditional institutions, where traditional institutions were given a role to ensure that children of school age in their communities are enrolled. So I think we need to revive this as well. Let's engage the traditional institutions. Let's engage the, uh, the religious leaders. In addition to that, issues of uh, security also are also is also a matter of concern. If we want to work as a team, people must feel safe, must feel com must feel comfortable to send their children to school. The way or this, the the path that takes them to school must be safe. They must work as a team. They must be appreciated and encouraged. So these are things that uh, will go a long way. 
and in uh, advancing the frontiers of uh, collaboration uh, as far as achieving the right to education is concerned. Thank you. Thank you so much for your expertise on the news. Dr. Omaro Alkali, thank you once again. Thank you, my pleasure. The Governor of Plateau State,